Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. So I'm standing at the end of my craft table filming this first section of the video now. It is uh, Wednesday for you, Sunday for me. So I've just finished filming the making of all of these little hearts where I had a little play with crocheting and then I also pieced together some more lace to create some more elements to use on my projects. So that all happened on the weekend for me. But it's Wednesday for you and we have a prompt coming very, very soon, if not like tomorrow night. So uh, no, Wednesday be tonight. So very exciting. So I thought I'd just start by showing you the little pink heart is going right there. I like its position because I can still see the cross stitch fabric and I can still see my blanket stitch I did all those years ago in the process of prepping this piece of cross stitch fabric, Ada cloth, before I started the actual um, piece. So that little heart is going there. So he has found a home. I believe Honey Bear has snappled one. And I'm just gonna swing across to the mannequin now. So there's the mannequin. Now, before I show you the big lace heart, I've pieced in this. This is a piece of lace that I have in my stash, which is very heavily beaded and I just love it. I actually had pulled it out to make more hearts and cut it up. But when I realized just how much beading is there and how it's all interconnected, I thought the moment I trim that apart, it's just gonna fall to bits. So I walked over to the mannequin and it fits perfectly on the bodice. So I've got a little sleeve here and it just, I've pinned it right down to the waistline and just got some pins holding it up onto the bodice. So I like the, the swoosh up of the skirt. My big piece will go in here and you'll see the seamstress poking through there and it'll look like drapery over it. Um, then I've got this beautiful piece of wedding um, beaded motif that is so a tribute to grandma and then around here we've got this big space right up see I've got this scalloped neckline on my little mannequin that's just collars and bits and pieces that I like to maybe one day include depending on prompts and depending on design so I'm just going to bear with me because I've only got one hand here. I'm going to nestle in the big heart right there. So then that will all get trimmed back and all stitched in. So it'll be like, it'll swish up. Where's my finger? It'll swish up here. See the big girl on the stitchery and then your eye will come up here, then it'll swish back here and then it'll be, you'll be greeted by the big heart. So I've got some nice statement pieces in and still plenty of room for little little elements okay so that's the update on the mannequin really happy with the way that nestled in i like how it's covered see there's a oh gosh see how there's that seam there the waistband so it's sort of just drifting over it and then that still leaves me this big space on her bodice to put the heart and then I can come up here with other things depending on prompts. All right, I hope I haven't made you too seasick. Okay, I'll go back to my desk as I wanna work on the journal next. Okay, bye. Hello, I'm back. Okay, I'm back down at my other end of the table. I'm ready to have a play in the journal. Now, the journal has become a space for exploring ideas or samplers or sort of picturing a, a young girl who's collecting bits of lace that she loves or maybe thinking about a dress design that she would like made. So there's fabric-y ideas in there, hence Honey Bear and her mood board. What fabrics would her dress become? More hearts, excellent. Forgot they were in there. So in here was lace samples that I piece together to create sort of the feel of an old lace sampler. So that's what this journal's all about. So if you're new to the channel and you're wondering what the hang I'm doing, that's what I'm doing. So let's get in here. Oh, it's good. I was hoping I had a page 
We haven't been in the journal for a little while, so I wasn't sure even if I had a blank page. Okay, so let me just unpin this. So I've got a series of hearts already here. Those there, I think I must have been showing you how I create the spine, the tab spine. So we'll keep those just in case we need them. And I'm not sure. Oh, am I going to do a double spread? Who knows? Will I just do one page? Who knows? Well, let's just see what comes together. So we've got our base that we can work on. Now we've got a envisage if that's a word, a young girl who's been collecting little morsels, learning to crochet at school, <clears throat> maybe playing with hearts, doing some embroidery, and she's creating a bit of a collection. So we've got to keep it um, probably simple and not get too embellished. Well, there's famous last words. So I've got a bucket of fabrics handy in case we want to create a little bit of texture background interest there's all sorts of bits and pieces there so base plate i know this is the right site let's check i am well known for getting bigger than ben Hur, so let's just check my sizing okay so i need to stay in the confines of this you know what I should do before I go too far once I decorate that it's gone so let's have a little bit of forward planning here I've just grabbed my roll of calico or muslin if you're in the States and I'm going to use this to rip another one and it's just a snip and a rip get it at least one more to size because once I use that, I'll be back to, oh, I wonder what size it should be. So let's have a little forward planning, Corinne. And just at least rip. Rip to size a second one. Okay, so now I've got two. One to use and a spare. All right, okay, that was, that was a good thought to have at the last second. All right, so this young girl has learnt to crochet at school. So she wants to pop them in her little book. That fit really well, didn't it? Do we put another piece? I suppose it depends on colours, doesn't it? How is she going to present this? That's a good example of two, two um, sizes. They're the same, so we don't need him. And then we get into these paler ones. Gee, it's amazing how much space they take up. Then we got a little fine one. <coughs> This is one I didn't actually show you on Sunday. I'd left it beside my chair. I'd used a real shiny, slippery fabric. It was a bugger to crochet with. It was sort of flipping and flopping everywhere. <clears throat> but um, it has created quite a, a pretty, shimmery little piece. Um, I think... I think I need to put another piece of fabric down. No, don't like that. I do like this. <clears throat> that might be just enough to slither through there. See, they would have used scraps of things too. Well, often the kids would sort of scrounge whatever they could to make themselves a little journal or a, a sampler book. When you go through and... So I'm going to use, just for interest, I'm going to leave that seam on. 
<clears throat> might even turn it upside down actually it's more interesting this way yeah i'm going to and it's hand stitched look at that this is an antique piece of linen that's all hand slip stitched someone has sat there and done that so we're going to use it yeah they they would have used scrap bits <clears throat> of fabric or whatever they could get their little hands on to create their samplers so I'm going to take advantage of that and just piece together some bits. I wonder if I should consider using one of those. Yeah, same fabric as that. Too big. A maybe. If I bring in another fabric. If I was to use that, then I could cut that there and save that. But then I would need to find another something there, <clears throat> which is all doable. Oh, I love this. Would she have gone to the kitchen and taken a, a flower sack <laughs> and created a page in her little sampler after she pinched it and hoped the chef didn't notice that she'd taken it? Do we leave the line? Oh, I like that. <clears throat> Goodness me, I've got a frog in the throat. It's been like that all day and I don't know what's going on. It's been a few fires around. The um, We've got... Gee, I like the colour of that side better. Or do I? Or that one. Oh gosh, it's like splitting hairs. That looks like it was the outside of the bag. It looks really aged. This is the inside. Does it still smell like flour? No, it smells like dishwashing liquid. Um, yeah, there's a bit of bushland. We're on a bit of acreage just away from a very busy suburb. But between us and a lot of houses, dense housing, is a bit of a mountain range. Well two hills with a lot of plants on it uh, trees and it's a koala habitat so there's been a bit of um, burning off going on just to keep that under control because when summer hits the last thing we want is a fire to rip through a koala habitat that would so not be cool i'm going to include this I'm picturing this young girl has gone down to the kitchen. She's pretty friendly with the cook, usually a large rotundous lady because they sample their food. Well, that's how Hollywood presents it, don't they? And she said, I'm looking for fabric for my sample book. Do you have anything? And the chef has given her this. She's probably in a grumpy mood. And I reckon she's just flung it across and said, here, kid, take that, get out of my kitchen. So the little girl has gone, beauty. And she's trottled up the stairs. Oh, tell you what, all in my head. Oh, that's tough. <clears throat> and said, I can do something with this. So she's been a busy girl with all her little hearts. And she's now going to try and piece together a little sampler for her diary, her journal, out of whatever she can scavenge. So far, that's where we're at. So I can do a, maybe a frame around that. Love to do some seed stitch in it. Got a little spot here. <clears throat> Where's that little one? He's so dainty. I must not be tempted to go and pull the one off Honey Bear's dress because it was a nice one. She really, I think, grabbed the good one. Oh, if I was doing a page for Slow Stitch, you know, a proper, you know, all in, I'd do something like half hearts and, but no, stay on to the topic. We are doing a sampler from a little girl. <coughs> 
and she's using bits and she's making things and just getting them stitched down. That's a pretty one too. That could go up there. Oh, she's been a busy girl. Do we want that one? That pattern is that one. Tell me I need another page. That's a repeat, so that's saved. Looks a bit crowded, but boy, she's been busy, hasn't she? Maybe we take him off, bring him up to there. Oh, you could fiddle with this. <laughs> she could write something on her page, couldn't she? That looks a bit like she hasn't done much homework. Oh, these are still lying on my desk from when I created these. Maybe she could do something a bit. It's, it's hard to pair it back. You know, you just want to, you just want to go for it. I don't mind that. You gotta think she's she's only young. So stop, you know, overthinking it, girl. And just pretend. So we've got those two patterns, those three patterns, all different style style yarns. That's the only repeat. Love the background be lovely to have a piece of this in my journal and I think if I do a bit of stitching here do I need this <clears throat> do I do I do that yeah Yep, just gives a little bit of space between that and that. So she's made the heart, she's had some leftover bits, she's added that to her display and she's got this little cascade of hearts. The only heart that I'm not sure about is that one. I didn't really like it when I made it. I still don't really, where's Honey Bear's dress? We're not gonna take the heart. Maybe we don't need it. Oh, that's it. Yeah, just not, just didn't sit well. Really slippery crochet cotton and it was really old. I'll grab your, the roll and show you. Oops, I just kicked the camera. I'll show you that cotton. <clears throat> I just don't know if it was even used to crochet. I, I just don't know what its story is. There's no names. There's, it was in a, um, you know, a thrift store and you can see the shine on it. So I was gravitated to it straight away because I thought that is going to make a beautiful heart. But it's nearly springy. It moves all the time. It's a, a shocker to stitch with. So I thought if I could use a little in a crocheted heart, it's probably a good thing. But yeah, not not a fan. <clears throat> so if you know what that is all about, I sort of felt like maybe it was used for embroidery, like couching it down or, I don't know. Do not know. But it was in grandma's thing, actually. I, yeah, it was in grandma's crocheting. I got this sewing caddy. You'll know what I mean. It's um three layers with a handle and they click out. It sort of looks like a toolbox. I've got that and it's full of threads. And when she went into the nursing home, she took that as her little stash of threads to crochet from if she felt so inclined. And that was in there. Now I remember, I need to actually, 
I need to go visit that container because I think there's some half done crocheting some patterns <clears throat> maybe there's some bits and pieces that could potentially come into this hmm I know at the beginning of this project I went rummaging everywhere and I saw heaps of things I'm like oh that'd be good that'd be good heaps and heaps of things but I haven't really pulled them out because I just didn't want to clutter up my workspace with lots of random things so it might be time to go for another look at all the treasures that are hidden in cupboards because you know, put them top of mind. Yeah, I think I probably need to do that. I know there's a pile of crocheting books to the just behind me on a shelf. They did come into my room. But I didn't want it to get out of hand. Oh, these are blunt. Blunt pins. Like, what the... I just chucked them in the bin. I'm so using them I was at a an old drapery store and they had them for 50 cents reduced and I picked up about six of those little wheels and I quickly realized why they were reduced they were blunt and I pretty much binned all of them but that wheel has somehow made it into my needle book And every so often I pick one up and it's like, oh, you know, when you buy something and see, they're just, they're flat. You buy something and you have, what do they call it? Buyer's regret. Yeah. Blunt pins. <clears throat> so I'm just going to place a few. few pins around hold it and then you know the drill invisible stitch and then I might do a bit of a play up here <clears throat> I can play down here gosh it feels like I've got smoke in my throat okay do we need anything else? What else has this little girl done? Here we go. She's going to go. <laughs> would, she use, would she do that? I don't know. She would have saved these, but like little girls do. <clears throat> Here's another little bit. And another bit. This is all left from when I did the big heart. Are they pretty enough? Or do we go rummaging? See, I haven't even stitched these yet. And that. Mm, got plenty of homework that hasn't been done. What about the little girl has a little secret stash <coughs> of lacy things there's some nice crocheting what if we were oh I like that hmm. that'd be nice it sort of fits the theme of crocheting I might think about it. it depends how busy I get in here okay guys what I'm going to do is pause the video I'm going to stitch all this down then I'll come back with needle and thread and we'll have a bit of a play in here maybe do some seed stitch or and in the meantime then I can have a little think about that all right see you very shortly won't be a moment hi guys I'm back so everything is um, invisible stitch down, so nice and secure. And I thought I might actually have a play with this um, cotton. It didn't crochet re re real well for me. And I did try it 
for slow stitch uh, some time ago and I wasn't a fan so I thought I'm gonna have another go at it and find see what I can do with it so I just need to find a needle that is big enough to take it and uh, <clears throat> might do a little bit of stitching with it and just see might do a bit of a overcast stitch around the edge that'll stop fraying see if that yeah see that's sitting all right maybe i didn't have a thick enough needle for it it is quite see it ah oh, no that's i oh, now i remember it twists and knots ever so easily i think that's what was the problem i can feel it flinging around it's nearly like tensile wire it's a bit unusual this crochet cotton i presume that's what it is i wouldn't have thought it'd be an embroidery product yeah now i remember see how it just twisted then and it gives you so it's getting really tight yeah that's really obnoxious to work with. It's such a nice thread. It's um, got that shimmer about it, but it's really old and goodness knows what its story is. So let's just take that away. I don't, I don't like it. It's not going to happen. We'll go back to Old Faithful, but I wouldn't mind a thicker one than a 12 I'd like an 8 oh, maybe I could even use that for something different would that look too chunky yeah it would the little girl's got to have some some standards as they say where is <clears throat> just a standard number 12 that would be a 12 that's an old one too, so it would be nice to use that. So I did overcast stitch with my cotton from, you know, sewing machine cotton, standard stuff, around the edge of this because it's it really crumbles very easily and I didn't want it to be a feature. I just wanted to know that it was secure. It'd be good that this is against the spine because that'll protect it. So what I'm thinking is I could do a running stitch through to frame. Let's have a look. To frame the picture. I could do... The overcast stitch, I'm thinking the overcast stitch, I sort of, I want it to feel a bit clumsy, childlike, like a little girl has done it, not me trying to make it as pretty as possible. It's just a little girl has been told to stitch it down and bring it to school next week. So she's doing the bare basics. So I'm going to make the overcast stitch quite clumsy overstated dog like tooth <laughs> even though that's pretty advanced for a little girl I would have thought but it is simple it's not like the other one so potentially a clever little girl could have done that the other thing I was thinking too when I was stitching all these little hearts down <clears throat> this could even be a sampler still for a traveling salesman because he is selling you know all of these wools or crochet cottons to shops so he can least have you know go to his book and say that's that that's that and the shopkeep can make their selections on restocking their crochet cottons so it definitely still works for some of the lace pages i was thinking along the lines of a traveling salesman with their sampler this one i sort of felt like it was a little girl creating a page in her diary or journal 
I love those old journals where they've cut pictures out, those um, 1900s and those pretty little pictures. There's bunnies with little girls and, you know, those scrapbook pictures. I just think they're beautiful. You see them come up for sale from time to time and they're, they're pretty big money. And often they're glued into books with that homemade flour and water glue. So then the books get munched on by silverfish and cockroaches because it's pretty much flour and water mixed together. Well, it is to... I remember making that as a kid too. It was a cheap glue. And it never really holds. I think you put salt in it to stop animals from eating it. Was that Play-Doh? I don't know. I'm having memories now come flooding back. But I remember the pictures never really stuck. So you'd come back to your book 12 months later and half the pictures had fallen out. Until you got your hands on school glues like Clag. That was the name from the past for those Australian girls. Remember Clag? And it was in a, um, oh, it was a purple cylinder type container with a white lid and the paddle went into, it clicked onto this little cylinder of glue and the paddle was down in the glue and you'd take the lid off and use the paddle that was through the lid to apply the, the glue to your paper. Oh. Goodness, I tell you, I'm glad they cancelled that. That was the most inefficient way of gluing. It had a really unusual smell about it. I'm sure it was called clag. It may not have been, you know. Maybe I'm thinking of the next version of it all was in a slightly triangular, no, sorry, yeah, it's slightly triangular shaped bottle. That might have been clag. I'm going to have to Google it now, for goodness sakes. Now it'll be in the back of my head. And I'll be thinking about the glue. You know something naughty I used to do with glue? And it's not sniffing it before anyone goes, oh my goodness, Corinne's about to admit to something. <clears throat> no, 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 not at all. What I used to do is I used to love the way that it would dry and you could peel it off like when you were sunburnt. Oh, you guys will be thinking, this child is, she's a funny kid. I used to drizzle it into the corner of my tidy box, which was the, for those of you in another country that are wondering what the hang I'm talking about, our little desks in Australia had tidy boxes. So you'd have this, this surface that was your desk, and but underneath you'd pull out this plastic drawer and in there would be all your bits and pieces, your books, your ruler, your glue, pencil case. And that was your you know, your tidy box. And that tidy box could be slid out completely. And if you were made sit somewhere else in the room or went to another room, you could take your tidy box with you, slide it into another desk and you had your everything with you. So me being a naughty girl, obviously now I look back on it and go, oh my goodness. I used to like drizzling the clear glue that we would know now as craft glue, well, that sort of became quite popular when I was at school. That was the fancy glue. We would, I would drizzle a bit of it in the bottom of my tidy box and smear it all out, let it dry, and then pick at it, peel it up. So that was a, a regular little shenanigans and then <laughs> mum would always be I'd say I need some more glue mum would be like gee you go through some glue I'm always buying you glue I can hear her say it and you know why because this little shocker was pouring it into the corner of her tidy box and um, picking it up well it all came to a nasty end and that was the end of that activity because the glue was put down in the corner and I didn't attach the lid properly. So a lot of glue went into the corner. It was the weekend and I headed home, come back on the Monday and that glue had drifted not only from my corner but through a heap of my books. 
So I soon realized that that was probably not a good idea because glue and my beautiful books, and I loved my books when I was very, very proud of my exercise pads and that was, you know, they were like my space. Does that make sense? Probably sounds silly. But when they had pages glued together, I just, I realized then that this was a silly behavior and was dangerous because my my property would be damaged you know my my personal exercise pads for all my classes with all my hard work had pages glued together so that was the end of that so mum would have been like oh they mustn't be gluing anymore at school shocking child so at least at least I learnt my lesson but there was at least a good year of it <laughs> But I do remember the day it all got glued together. Yeah, not good. Not good. Yeah, I like that. That's good. That feels very, very childlike, you know, just a, no, can you see it? See, just a, a simple overcast stitch. I've stitched all that down through there. So that's nice and secure. So I only really need to come up there. That saves a little bit of thread so I will end that off and I'm going to jump over here and just drop a few stitches in here then I might change my thread to something finer so probably the 12 that's sitting here on the desk and I might just do a few little seed stitches in there. We might even dig out the beads and just pop a few little beads in there. This little girl has collected a few little treasures to stitch in as well. Some little pearls or something along those lines. Those stitches there are half the size of those stitches there. So that's a bit bodgy, but probably childlike. Hmm. Will that bother me? Will I unpick it? Time will tell. All right. Let's get this thread now. Same colour, but finer. And this will be good just to pop a few little seed stitches just in around. Ow. So I'm thinking, so even just some seed stitches may be enough and we don't need beads, but we'll see. I just want to use it as a bit of a, a little extra detail. a very long needle this is a straw needle this is fought with danger plus it's bent so where I think it's going it ain't it's coming in another direction <laughs> can't see myself getting hurt yeah that's good due to that length can I actually do longer stitch to save time and movement go in and up all in one so i think i said earlier in the video it's sunday afternoon for me and you're watching this wednesday so we have a prompt tonight Lately I've been thinking it's a Thursday night thing, but it's not. It's a Wednesday thing. I wonder what it will be. Yeah, 
The other thing is, while you're watching this, Susanna will be with me. And a friend, Rosalind. Now, Rosalind was on our Paris trip along with Susanna and I and Mary Ann and her daughter. We just all hit it off. So I've invited Rosalind and Susanna up to Queensland, Brisbane for a week. And we're just going to hang out. We're going to stitch. I'm not sure if I've told you any of this yet. I may have, but I know Susanna's mentioned it in a couple of her videos that she's getting ready to go to Queensland. I did a little project for Rosalind. The regular watchers would already know this. I made a little potential Japanese-inspired snippet roll for her to play with while Susanna and I do goodness knows what. Ros will be able to sit and stitch with us. <clears throat> so I know one project we're going to work on is uh, she's bringing up her design that she's had printed on a tea towel her little houses and her village scenes and I'm going to get one into my hot little hands and have a go at stitching it so that when she has the retreat owl next year she's hoping to have a few different examples of different ways you can stitch the piece and then once the retreat's open she's releasing it to the open market so she'll do a video series with it and she'll have the examples her friend has been given one as well down in Melbourne and her friend loves black and yellow and she is stitching away at it and it is a, um, I keep thinking Peter Rabbit but it's not Peter Rabbit, Alice in Wonderland because she's got the big rabbit on it, the Cheshire cat. It looks amazing. I hope I'm not talking out of school and mentioning something before Susanna has had a chance. I do apologise, Susanna. It just popped into my little brain. So, yeah, there's a few of us stitching the piece. And um, that way the retreat ladies will see lots of different treatments of the same panel. So I can't wait to get my hand on. I've been thinking about what I can do with these little houses. Hello, Fudge. These little houses all in a row. And what else have I got? Oh, I'm going to take them shopping. Lots of shopping. I'm going to show them all my haunts. And then on the weekend, we're going to Nambour to the big antique fair that's up there. Happens a couple times a year at the... I'm just patting fudge. It happens a couple times of the year um, at the Nambour showgrounds. So I'm going to take the girls. We've got to get up nice and early to hit the road. It's about a two-hour drive, maybe not quite two hours for me to get there. So up early, early to bed, early to rise. And we'll go and spend the morning walking around the antique fair. So Susanna's hoping to find lots of fabrics and things like that. I'm going to try and be very refrained. I don't need anything. Plus, before we get to that activity, there'll be lots of my shops, the bead shop, the thread shop, numerous fabric shops. So my guess is by the time I get to Saturday and it's the antique market, I'd say I would have spent my spare change. So that probably is not a bad thing. And I don't really need anything. I really just need to use what I've got to be honest. But you never know. There might be something. <laughs> I'm sure I will report back my findings. So I'm really looking forward to it. So Sunday for me today, making this video, and I believe Susanna's flight is Tuesday. So by Wednesday, we will be well and truly in the thick of goodness knows what. She's bringing up some uh, a Tilda book too. There was a snail. Um, I don't know if you remember seeing the video. If you haven't seen it, go to her channel, Vintage Blend Studios, and it's this Tilda snail. 
and he's sitting on a piece of driftwood and then he's got rope going back to a little cart and you put him on your desk and you put things in the cart and pins in him and he just is beautiful. So as soon as she showed me the book, well, she did a review actually on a channel. Um, <clears throat> I was like, oh, we're so got to make him. So he's coming and I hopped online and I found these little timber carts. They probably, they're only 12 centimetres by three or four centimetres. They're, they're tiny. They look like the, like the ones in the, the photo. So I've got the timber cart. We just need to find a piece of driftwood. Well, that's going to be harder than anything considering none of us near the ocean. But who knows, we might be able to find something at the back of my block. A piece of bark or something. I don't know. And that is what you mount the little snail on. And then he's dragging this cart behind him. So the, the timber is the bottom of him, I think, from memory. So we'll be doing that. And then goodness knows what else. Well, could you imagine? So I'm sure there'll be some updates and some carry on, some silliness. There we go. I'm happy with that. Nicely stitched. I've got a little bit of seed stitch in there. That flower is loose. So let's just get that secured before it gets forgotten. I think... That's about all. I love that I can see the stitching from whomever did that. They turned that edge in and slip stitched it. I love that. Yeah, this little flower is flapping in the breeze here. So let's get a couple little stitches. Got a bit of time. Maybe we explore a few little pearls. Just don't want to overdo it. It's so easy to slip into something Corinne would do where I'm trying to stitch to a theme, which means pairing back a little. But does it matter? Probably not. Will I remember the theme in six months when I look at this page? Probably not. So therefore I could go for it, couldn't I? I'm going to use that thread and I'm going to have a look for Reg. Where are you, Reginald? There he is. Is that Reg? Yep. <clears throat> Let's thread Reg up. I'm going to lean across my desk and grab some beads. Anything in there that catches the eye? I'm sort of thinking of they're not pearls they're just like little seed stitches mm, they're pretty they're so big I never seem to get to use them because they're so big any pearls kicking around oh I know where there's some pearls A lovely, lovely YouTube subscriber to my channel sent me some treasures. You're seeing these out of school because I haven't shown the stitchery that goes with it. It's to do with the little swap. Look at those. So there she wrote on a little note. These are from the 1980s. Look at those. They really work. Gosh, that would have made a great little heart. I'm going to I'm going to do it. Let's just snip. Oh, this is just trouble waiting to happen. Reg, where are you? Are you ready, Reg? Let's get Reggie up here. In amongst it going to catch a few and then when I turn this camera off I need to put all of those in a container before they end up everywhere if I don't wriggle that too much 
I love how it's got two different colors. Just a few little scattered beads. So there's a third size, or is that? No, that's just different colors, different tones. All right, so let's snip. Ooh, they're so tiny. Let's get a few of these little guys in here as well, just to scatter. Oh, Reg. Reg, you can't do the job. Boy. Let's see if there's something finer. I don't know if there will be. Reg has always handled it. Those beads are tiny. Oh, here's a little one. Reg's little brother. There we go. Okay. Let's let's see if we can get <clears throat> boy. This needle is so fine. If this goes into me, it's not going to be good. <clears throat> so we're just going to concentrate. And don't be rash in our movements. Because this little, this little bugger is going to bite. So I'm just going to skip around the place. Oh, they're tiny. Oh, I don't have anything this small. These are brilliant. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. Don't get carried away, girl. I use too many. But you know what's going to happen. <clears throat> they look really pretty laying over the top of the seed stitch. You guys can't even see what I'm doing, can you? Let me zoom in. You see the first three big guys? I just nestled them in amongst all of the petals. Now I'm just scooting around over the seed stitch. Just popping. Because they're so small. You know, they are very similar. Hang on to that needle. They're very similar to the ones the manufacturer used in the centre of that lace, to be honest. That's probably why they look really good. <clears throat> Another one. Where am I? I'm over here. So I've just sort of done a bit of a lap around. So the little girl's necklace broke and she has saved the beads. And now to get extra, extra marks at school, she is stitching a few little beads on just to make it look pretty. There we go. I'll just pop one up here. I really should stop. I should stop, but I'm not stopping because I'm having too much fun sprinkling these itty bitty beads. What am I going to put them in? I'm pretty sure I still have some little containers. It'd be lovely to keep them together because I, I do love how they all blend. She sent me a second pack as well. These are from the uh, grandmother's stash. The set in the tissue paper are from the 1890s. Unwrapped is the 1920s. That's right. I think I've put the tissue paper ones away. See, there's some of those as well. I might actually pack all of these together and that way I know exactly who they're from and whenever I pull them out, 
I will know what's what's what. All right, guys, I'm going to finish that off there because I think that is enough of a sprinkling. Like it could really, really play, but we're not doing a slow stitch piece as such, are we? Like you could drift them down in amongst the hearts, but we won't. <clears throat> we'll leave it at we'll leave it at that. Just a few scattered around. It just gives that little piece a little extra. Yeah, let me zoom out so you can get a better picture. Yeah, that's really good. I love it. All right, guys, I'm going to leave it at that. That is great. And I'm going to very carefully contain these beads before they end up everywhere. Let me make a little space. Grab my, grab the diary, a journal, sorry. Let's go up a little bit more. They should be okay there. There's my spare pages. I end up tearing a couple more just in case. Be prepared, as they say. That goes there. That can sit in the back. And that's the next piece to join the pages in the journal. Lovely. Okay, everyone. You guys have a great day. It's my Sunday afternoon now, so I'm going to go and relax. And... Um, Ah, yeah, like I said, Wednesday, it'll be a new prompt, so very exciting. All right, guys, hello, Fudge. Fudge is saying goodbye. All right, guys, look after yourselves. Have a lovely day. Bye.